we're going to take a look at exercise 4A for Colonial Adventure Tours. Let's read the problem. Write PL sequel or T sequel procedures to accomplish the following task. A. Obtain the first name and last name separated by a space of the guide whose number currently is stored in I guide number. Place these values in the variables I first name and I last name. Output the contents of I guide num, I first name, and I last name. Now first things first, these requirements are very specific. Oftentimes when a user is giving us requirements, they're not this specific. But when they are, we have to write our code to be this specific. So we're going to. Now when I develop anything in a database, I like to start with select statements and then build outwards. So the example here is that they want us to select the last name and the first name. They want us to put it into some variables from the guide table where the guide number equals a specific number that's going to be supplied to us. So let's go ahead and make that select statement first. We're going to do our select last name first name from the guide table where guide number equals our specified number. So for testing purposes, I'll go ahead and use a guide number. Now let's run this statement and see what we get. There we go, Miles Abrams. This is exactly what we're looking for. So we can now start to expand out into our actual store procedure. So let's do that. Let's start by specifying what our store procedure is. Now we're going to call it display guide. So the command is that we want to create the procedure. With Oracle, it's real nice. We can do create or replace. So that way, if the store procedure already exists, it will just replace what we already have. There's the name of our, of our store procedure. Now, in our requirements, we were given very specific requirements that we want I guide number to be our variable. And because we know that it's going to be used on our guide table with the guide num column, we can actually go ahead and use that to tell Oracle, our store procedure, what specific type this I guide number should be. So we're going to use the table and the column, and we're going to specify this keyword percent type. Don't forget our word as. And because we're doing a store procedure, I also like to come down and clean things up and go ahead and put our end and our slash. Oh, I forgot my semicolon on my select statement. So now let's go ahead and create some of the variables in our requirements. So we were told that we're going to take this data and we're going to place it into some variables. The first one is I last name. And we already know what the type is. So we can go ahead and say 
guy dot last name percent type. Look, I have a typo. If we didn't use the percent type as we're doing now, we would actually have to say what our variable types are. This is just a handy way to a tie it to a columns type. So our next variable is I first name. And don't forget the semicolons, that's really important. And now we need to begin our code. So now that we have the basics of our select statement, let's go ahead and change out our hard-coded code guide number with the variable I guide number. And because our, our requirements told us specifically how to do this, they want us to insert the data into these variables. Now looking at this, what's happening here is we're going to select the last name and the first name and then we're going to insert them into I last name and I first name. By using the into keyword, we can match up our variables to the columns that we've selected. Now there's one more requirement that we've been asked to do and that is to output that data. So dbms underscore output is a library that has put line in it. And we're going to specify our input variable. And now we're going to use that library again with the put line. We want to always trim where possible. And to concatenate, we have to use the double pipe. And there we are. That's our stored procedure right there. I'm going to shrink it a little bit now just so that way we can try to get it all on one screen. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we've got the response procedure created. Now to verify that that procedure exists, we can do it in two ways. We can execute, which we're going to come back and do here in a moment. But we can also go to our object browser. We can look at procedures. We can click the procedure we just created, which was this display guide. And there's our code. So we now know that that procedure is in the database. Let's go back to our SQL commands and let's take a, a spin using that new stored procedure. All stored procedures, when we want to run them, starts with the word begin, then the name of our stored procedure, along with the value we want to pass in. Don't forget 
our semicolons. Our word end and our slash. Let's run this. There we have it. AM01 on the first line. Miles Abrams with the space in between on the second line. So that's example 4A. One last thing I'll show you is if you're having a hard time and you do want to get rid of that command or that procedure, you can write by hand a drop procedure or you can also go right back to that object browser, go to the procedures, click the procedure and say drop again drop and now that procedure is gone. So I hope that helps you with example 4A.